What is up, everyone? Welcome to the No Life Gaming Show. We got a special show for you today. It's our first ever guest and doing a little interview with him. And uh, hopefully we can do a lot more of these. It's going to be pretty fun. We got a pretty pretty short show for you. We got a couple games we've been playing, and then there's a few news topics, and we're going to get out of here. And uh, tomorrow for the tech show as well, there's not too much news. We're just kind of in a e post-E3 lull. Um, but hopefully everything... Um, starts to starts to pick back up before you know the august little august september rush um so without further ado let's bring on the co-hosts what's up dudes how's everyone doing hi yo <laughs> uh, yeah sorry for missing last week but it happens we we weren't even trying to do an hour and 45 minute show we wound up doing an hour and 45 minutes. i know minute i don't show. know how i was Dude, late for my thing too involved happens every single time yeah it was e3 man he had to do all no, I, I know so well now i have to get all of my e3 stuff out after <laughs> speaking about e3 yeah. <laughs> and welcome to our guest here so this is nick stefanacci he was at e3 hey everyone now where do you live did you fly uh, there I, yeah so i flew there i live in merchantville like right outside of philadelphia Oh, shit. And nice. yeah so we flew out last friday my cousin and my dad my parents actually just got a place in LA so for Saturday and Sunday we were just helping them move in stuff all day and whatnot and then Monday is when we actually started paying attention to E3 I guess that's when the first big conferences starting happening I, I want to say like the important ones mm -hmm. um, I guess Microsoft was on Sunday and we watched it which was pretty good we didn't go there in person but yeah Monday is when we started actually doing E3 stuff so to like get into the actual conferences you needed like a VIP or like a media badge or something like that. And I only had a gamer pass, which is like the lowest level. And then my cousins, they had the industry pass, which is just above that. It gets you in like an extra couple hours early. But so Monday, go my, ahead. My brother was at <clears throat> E3. He uh, was, um, he like, because he lives right next to the place, the convention center. Yeah. So he said he walked over there and asked if he could work there. And they gave him like a booth to play, to play a game at. Is that what you were doing? No, I, I was just going just for the hell of it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, just just uh. So that, a gamer nice pass added. is like a just like an access <clears throat> pass. Yeah, that's that's all it is. Just grants it's... you access to the show floor, and then like I said, above that is the industry pass, which my cousins have because they have some connections in the industry, so they got nice. to go in a couple hours early before me on some days, which was nice for them. But Monday, the first thing we did um, that was connected to E3 is that we went to la live which is just like a movie theater right across the street from the convention center mm -hmm. and we signed up probably like two or three weeks before to get tickets to actually go watch the playstation experience in a movie theater oh so, shit! That's yes cool. That's so cool. i mean we did that but this is when i started noticing that all right the, the e3 seems great like on camera and like watching it from home but when you go there it's, all it's right it's still a convention it's still a convention it's so it's so <laughs> i want to say like it gets like a clusterfuck at times because we show up I to the bet. movie theater we get there it says on our pass get there a half hour before we show up an hour before and the line's just out the door because there's people there that didn't sign up for passes and two of my friends or my cousins cousins didn't have passes so we're like all right just jump in this line we're gonna jump in the line with the passes and we'll see what happens so we get in line and we're like guys do you know what line this is like is this the one for passes or not like oh i don't know just talk to the person up there so then we go talk to like attendant at the movie theater and they're like, oh, we have no idea what's going on. <laughs> so we're like, we're like, all right, this is our first time here. We're kind of confused too, like what's going on. So we just jumped in line with a bunch of people that I guess assumed they were in the right spot. So we yeah. just jumped in line there. And then they were taking in like 10 people at a time. And then you oh, had to do check-ins within the movie theater. So we're like, we just keep checking the clock. And it's like 10 minutes before the actual show starts. And we're like, there's no way. There's at least 100, 150 people outside. There's no way they're getting everyone in. Holy shit. So, you got yeah. lucky they started with a 10-minute banjo. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Like, like, our two friends, they come in and, like, what do we miss? I'm like, you just missed the banjo guy. You did not miss anything. <laughs> the fucking yeah, so, banjo but, but dude. They actually came in after that part. They missed the whole Last of Us part. And they came in, and it was, like, during the commercial break part. Which was just kind yeah, of that weird yeah. twenty yeah. minute break that was yeah super that was... Awful for pacing. Yeah, it was yeah. it was well, not I mean, necessary. It just kind of took you out of it. Wait, I mean, it was because I guess they were like actually moving people. Yeah, because yeah. like the people there, they were actually like mo changing theaters and stuff. And it was like, okay, again, it was one of those things. If you're at the convention, that sounds really cool. But yeah, watching it was like. 
Yeah, and they did it for like okay. 20 minutes. That, All right. That second part. It was just 20 minutes of, of us making fun of it. But yeah, it just took so long. So I, I assumed that they were going to do it at least two more times after that. Because I thought they were going to have a theater for each game. Each, right. like, the game they that's what they, had, like, that's what they kind of said. And then yeah, they, that's what, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Because, like, they were, like, at the start, they were, like, kind of, like, oh, yeah, no, like, it's a, it's a whole experience. We'll be moving them through every time. And then, like, I think after how long the first one had, they were, like, yeah. okay, nope, nope. You're, you're here now. Congrats. <laughs> oh, my God. That sounds, that sounds like a nightmare, actually. So, I mean, I'm kind of happy I watched it from the theater and I wasn't actually there. I mean, it would have been a great experience to watch it from there, but, I mean... There was enough going on at the theater that it was like, all right, cool, whatever. Yeah. So that, that was our first day. We went home after that. We got um oh In and Out Burger, which I loved. Yeah. Um and then yeah, so Monday or Tuesday morning was the actual first day for the convention, and we woke up and I told my friends I was like, all right, we gotta go. We're going to the Smash tournament, so we had to be there. I was just guessing, maybe around like eight o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning, just to get in line to get a ticket. Because Nintendo said on their website that they were only giving out 500 tickets. Mm. So we're like, all right, we know how crazy Nintendo fans are. So we got to get there like bright and early. Because I was doing research to check out when people were lining up for the 2014 Smash tournament. And it said that people were showing up at 9 o'clock the night before. Oh, my God. Yeah. That sounds about right, actually. Yeah, and I'm like... Good old pre-release <laughs> launch wait party. Yeah, right. So, all right. So we roll up and, and it's LA and the traffic's terrible. So... To go eight miles, it took us like 45 minutes or something like that. So we, we, we got a plane like an hour ahead to do just about everything. So we roll up and we park and I start counting people in line. I'm like, all right, there's 100, 200, 300. And then we roll in line. We're like 320 in line. So like, all right, we're going to get a spot definitely. So more people start rolling up and rolling up and rolling up. And by the time it turns, like probably right before the direct, the Nintendo rep rolls by and he's like, all right, um, we had to open up the line to more people to accommodate everyone, so we're taking away seating. We're like, wait a minute, you're taking away seating? Oh so, yeah. So it's standing room only. Yeah, so it's standing room wow. only. So we're we're outside and it's like 95 degrees out. We're watching the directs on our phones. We're everyone's super sweaty, super hot. We've been standing for four hours, and then we're like, okay, we get inside and it's at like this clubbish kind of theater kind of concert venue. Because at one point, I was like, all right, I've been standing for eight hours. Let me just sit on the ground. And, like, a bouncer comes up to me. He's like, you can't sit there. I'm like, uh, you got to be kidding me. I'm like, I've been sitting this entire time. He's like, yeah, you can't shit. sit there. I'm like, all right, whatever. So, I mean, I'm just trying to get away all the bad stuff out so yeah. far. But, um, like, being in line and watching the direct with everyone was just, like, insane. Because everyone was screaming. And there's just a bunch of random people walking by us. And they're like, what the hell is going on? Like, when we're watching the direct, we're like, oh, Snakes and Smash or Pokemon Trainers and Smash. Everyone's just freaking out. What happened when they announced that everyone was going to be in Smash? Did everyone freak out and start everyone a riot? Was like, I, I, I was about to, like, tear off. Like, I did not know. I was about to, like, faint. I had no idea what was going on. It felt like a joke. <laughs> the real question, it kind of is. <laughs> yeah. When they announced Ridley, I imagine the place was popping. Everyone was like, Ridley! And we just kept screaming and screaming. It was insane. The meme is real now. It is. <laughs> I mean, the new meme's Waluigi now. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that a lot on Twitter. Who, Waluigi? Yeah. Yeah. How is he not in Smash? I have no idea. Have you seen the one where they... Uh... It's like him getting excited because they're announcing they're gonna add someone that everyone's been wanting, wanting or something like that. And it's Waluigi. It's not Waluigi. Yeah. It's fucking Wabafet. Because <laughs> they're all just going wah. I just remember like the mass like exodus of assist trophies. Waluigi. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how it was. It's just like Waluigi. Um. But yeah, to continue with the uh, tournament. So the tournament was ran pretty well. Uh, they had the grand finals of Splatoon before Smash, which it's pretty interesting because it seems like they're really trying to push that. Dude, I think I'm going to try to be a fucking Splatoon pro. No joke. <laughs> I'm, I like, love that game, I man. You, I give you like two months, though, before <laughs> you rage quit out of it because the colors don't match. <laughs> True, that's a good point. I actually, I actually have friends who play competitive uh, Splatoon. So. I might have to fucking put on colorblind mode just to not fucking rage quit. <laughs> All right, continue. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, they had the Splatoon uh, Grand Finals right before Smash, but I feel like 90%, 95%, even 100% of the crowd was there just for Smash. Yeah. Um, so yeah, then that happens, and they start the Smash tournament, and we're like, how are they going to run it this year? Because it seems like they're trying to take a more competitive approach with how they showed the game in the Direct and whatnot. 
But the tournament was ran like weird, I want to say, because they had the first two rounds were like doubles. Wait, had, real like, quick, items on. real quick, just so. to give some background, <laughs> you're you are part of the fighting game community, correct? Yeah. So, I mean, my background is I started playing fighting game tournaments back in Jersey before I left for school in Colorado in 2014. I've been running tournaments like at my house for the, like maybe like seven, eight years, just smash tournaments, little things. Then I went out to Colorado for school, and then I started running Smash tournaments out there, mm. where I became the tournament of the Super Smash Brothers Club out in Colorado, University of Colorado Boulder. Then we ran tournaments just weekly and whatnot. And we started running, um, we actually did, like uh, I want to say, like majors out there. We started running the Flatiron Series, which uh, the first one wasn't too big. We had around like 200 people, and I helped run the second one too, and we had around 250. And then this year, they had the biggest turnout for it, which was Flatiron 3, and they had over 400 players for it. Oh, nice. And they had, like, major names come out, like Leffen and Axe and I'm trying to think who else. Uh, MVD, ESAM, like, a ton of pros actually come out for it. That's nice. awesome. Yeah. So mainly yeah, mainly just Smash? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I play, I've been playing a lot of Dragon Ball now, but I used to play a ton of Street Fighter. But that's just, like, I feel like going downhill from it here. But one year you took, uh, what, 8th at DreamHack? Oh yeah, no, I took ninth place at DreamHack right. yeah, um, last year. Um, yep. DreamHack uh, Denver. I got ninth place in Marvel vs. Capcom. Uh, what's I can't even think of the name. Is it is it, it Ultimate? The, no, I'm thinking it's it's, it's 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 last year's version. Yeah, I keep, like <laughs> making that game every two years now. I can't even think of the name. I love that game, but now I've been playing Dragon Ball and now some Blaze Blue, which is fantastic. Yeah, um, I'm pumped for Smash though. Dude, I'm so excited for it. The changes that they made are definitely improvements. So when you say that, like I'm like like one of the big things when I played Smash, <laughs> which was only the N64 <laughs> version, was the fucking uh, shield. And I noticed that they changed the shield. Is that a good change or a bad change? So I I think the change is definitely welcome. It's going to be hard to get used to because I wasn't. I mean, if you're talking about the parrying system, like the the perfect shielding, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, in sixty four, it was you hold Z and it's a you, you get a magic bubble. Yeah. yeah, so in this one, it's like you hold shield, but you have to drop right after the attack or right before the attack to do a okay. parry. Yeah. So if you think about it, like Street Fighter Third Strike, you can parry any single attack, and that's what I think they're kind of going with. Like if you parry this attack, you can beat that attack, but it has to be of equal or less frames. So if you parry a smash attack, you can attack back with the smash attack which is nice it makes it more aggressive and more i guess i want to say competitive right which is the people complained about like the main complaint especially about brawl but also with uh four was it favored a lot of defensive play yeah this game seems to definitely be favoring the more aggressive play which is hopefully going to speed it up as well mm -hmm. yeah the, the speed of the game feels a bit faster than smash four uh, one of the things that I noticed at the Invitational, and then when I started playing, I was like, eh, I don't really like too much, is that when you hit someone with like a smash attack, a trail of smoke goes flying, even more than previous games, and the character teleports like right to the spot where they get hit. So think of it like in like Smash 4, the arc's like, oh, you hit the person, and it goes like that. Mm -hmm. In this game, it goes like that. It's like instant. Mm. It's going to be hard for follow-ups. Yeah, exactly. Follow extension. Yeah, that's probably a conscious de decision then for them to do that. Yeah, it seems like it. You definitely um, uh, get the most out of your buck when you start a combo. Yeah, like keep everything at like short or low percentage and just do tilts and aerial attacks and whatnot. Like smash attacks is just going to fly them out the window. Are unless it's going to kill. Are yeah, you, unless it's going to kill. Are you going to play on the GameCube controller? Yeah, I, I got to play on the GameCube controller. I mean, I've been playing that since the game came out. Yeah. I love it too much. And everyone was freaking out when they announced that too. I bet. But the, I feel like I the Pro like, Controller is such a better controller. It, it, it might be a better controller, but for Smash, I mean, it's like your, your hands just feel so natural. It's, yeah. it's home. With it. Yeah, it is home. That's the best way to put See, it. Yeah, I don't have that uh, that connection to that controller, so hopefully I can... That's, well, think I, of, I played think of it more. like playing a first-person shooter, not on a computer. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like that. For, for me, yeah. like, man, like, 64 was always, well, always probably even my favorite Smash game. Oh, it's my favorite, but also I'm never going to use an N60 controller, 64 <laughs> yeah. controller for it again. Imagine playing a first-person oh, shooter, like, remember GoldenEye and shit on that <laughs> I controller? I remember GoldenEye. <laughs> I still own it, and it is it is fun for nostalgia's sake, and that's it. <laughs> the pro dude, the problem with today is, like, in, like all the N64 controllers you can get now, are they're all jank. Everything's jank because they're, they're so old. 
and you're just at the point now when you play with your friends, be like, no, nah, I don't want the giant controller. Give me mm-hmm. the good one. <laughs> All right, so what else? What else happened? Um, so, yeah, I mean, the tournament ran pretty well. Uh, everyone was expecting, like, another character reveal at the end, but Sakurai won on stage. He gave uh, Zero the trophy, and then he was like, oh, I got to go home to finish working on the game. My flight's in a couple hours. See everyone. Hmm. So, I mean, he's really dedicated with this, and he, he wants to get it as done as soon as possible, it seems like. So that man's crazy. Yeah, dude, he's insane. Like, God bless him. Like, he works his ass off for this game. Do you think there's any possibility of a delay? Um, I, I mean, I, I've watched every single video. I've been watching, like, when, when you would talk about Smash, like, I, I know, I feel like, I, I'm not, like, a know-it-all, but I just feel like I've watched every single thing on it. And so far, I, I found posts on Reddit or just people speculating about it, but they said that this is just a date just to throw out there. That's just what I to, think it is. Yeah. Just to meet yeah. the 2018 deadline, which they yeah. said back in March. I, mean, to be I can see that though. too, but it's, well, aren't, aren't they, tra- well, okay, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming they're also trying to do online with this, right? Well, the online's coming in, they've said is coming September. Right, they've been saying that for yeah. like a year and a half now. Yeah, so I mean, they, they <laughs> delayed the online several times already. Right. Everyone, well, the, the speculation was that it was going to come out, the online was going to come out with Smash. Well, it's, it's, not, even, it's not even that linked, but it's like, I'm, I'm wonder. that's the thing that I can actually see holding up that game is if they say they do want to have an online feature for it and if they don't have their online stuff figured out by then, that's what I see possibly delaying the game more than how much work's been put into the game itself. Yeah. I'll play Devil's Advocate. When they said December 2nd last year for Xenoblade, we all sat here going, There's, yeah. that's getting yep. delayed. And then it came exactly. out December 2nd. So, I mean, the only games we've seen delayed so far have been games that have not had an exact date. Like Fire Emblem was supposed to be playing, yeah. and now it's spring. Well, no, that that that's what I guess I'm trying to say is I, I like, I think I think they're the the team making the game is going to have the game done by then. But if it does get delayed, I expect it because of online, not because yeah. the game's not finished. Yeah, I can see that. I can definitely see that. Plus, this is fucking Sakurai, and are is he gonna release a half finished version and say we can do an update when the online comes out? Uh, I don't no. think so. I don't think he would. Sakurai's mo. He's gonna and, wait and, until it's absolutely ready to go, which the sucks. Thing is, you know, like if you if you watch the direct and you saw the Smash Bros. direct and everything, just about every character seemed playable. Yeah, like everyone was playable. So I mean, it just makes you think how much of this game is actually done. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, and he even said he saw some bugs. Um, that yeah. he, he he noticed bugs while watching I, the gameplay. I, I I ran into some bugs actually playing. So I mean, if I can go back into this E three stuff. So right after the tournament, we ran over to the convention center, which was probably a couple blocks from it. And we grabbed our badges. We walked inside and I was just overwhelmed by everything. Like it's just insane. Everything going on. We only had an hour the first day because we were at the smash tournament, but we're just walking around and like the videos don't do it justice. Like every developer, every publisher, they put in like 110%. They just put in so much money to the production value that it makes it feel like an amusement park, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Like I was talking to my cousins. I was like, Oh, like, do you see all the Nintendo and Smash stuff here? This is actually going to be, like, in the theme park at Universal. So this is going to be insane. But we're just walking around, checking everything out, seeing where everything is before we get ready for the next day. And Wednesdays when we actually got to play the games and everything. And Wednesdays, the first day I got to play Smash. So um, you can sign up for, like, a competitive side or for glory side. Or for fun and for glory. And the for fun side, um, you just got to play, like, four people at a time um items on stage hazards on and all that stuff and then the competitive side you get to play in a tournament setting which was nice but the weird thing was how it was structured it was like all right the first um match is free for all with four people and smash ball on and you had to win one of your matches out of two to uh, to progress to the next match which was kind of weird because like i was talking to my cousin i was like all right you know what we're just going to treat this as a 2v2 like, if you need a kill, if you're ahead, or if I need a kill, if I'm ahead, just kill each other. We're not letting these guys, like, get ahead of us. Playing doubles, Which, man. That's yeah, awesome. That's, that's what we did. We're like, and then we're talking to the guys ahead of us just to kind of figure out how good they were at Smash. We're like, oh, yeah, this pro's over there, this pro's over there. They're like, I don't know who that is. And I was just like, whew. All right, we got we got a chance. We're going to be able to, like, move on. So, yeah, the first match we, we start playing, and I'm like, oh, it feels different from Smash 4. But in the back of my mind, I'm just like, all right, I'm going to play it like Smash 4 because... It kind of looks like Smash 4, and that's what I played most recently. Um, So we move on to the next match, and then the next round, which is, again, four-player, like, free-for-all. 
Uh, the first round is like a practice round, and then the winner of that gets to move on to a 1v1, three stock, six minute match. So I progress to the final round, and I start facing off against this Mario. And this is where it feels like an actual like tournament setting because it's like the actual stock. There's a timer. There's no Smash Ball, no items, nothing like that. So uh, we start playing, and I start noticing like some jank like while we're playing. And these were some of the glitches that like Sakurai mentioned. So the first one was like I I'm shielding as Fox on Battlefield, and the guy was playing Mario, and he tried to run past my shield, but he couldn't do that. He mm. runs up to me, and it just stops him in his dead tracks. And he even yeah, yells, I he's like, about that. "Yeah, he's like, what the hell is going on?" I'm like. Yeah, why couldn't you run past me? And it's Fox, you can't side B through people either. And then that's what happened to me. Literally yeah. five seconds later, he threw me off stage. I side B, I hit his shield, and I fall to the platform. I'm like, hmm. what is going on? I'm like, that is not supposed to happen. And then, uh, yeah, he shortly after kicked my butt, and I got second, and he got first. And first place, you get a medal. And actually, let me grab the hat. <laughs> That E3 swag. You get this cool smash hat. Oh, nice, dude. Yeah. Like, that's pretty cool. Are you going to fucking put it on eBay? I I wonder what they're going on for right now. And you get a medal, too, so they're probably definitely going on eBay for something. Yeah, for you got to sure. sign it, too, first, though. <laughs> yeah. Nick, second place. <laughs> my One of my favorite things I saw um, while, like, watching it was the... Um, during the tournament, there was... Um, because, like, the, the whole running thing about Smash 4 was, like, people are mad about Bayo. You know, Bayonetta is broken. And then, I think, was it MK Leo who played yeah, and, and plop. Bayonetta? Yeah, and Bayo against Ridley on uh, Dreamland. And even with all with the, some of the nerfs that they've done with it, like, that 50% <laughs> off the top still works. And apparently, from what I was reading, uh, people next to Sakurai were saying that he was just shaking his head. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yo, <laughs> when this game get released, Bayo's getting buffed even, and she's getting nerfed even harder. <laughs> Yep. Apparently, she had like a quad jump at some point. Like, I was watching like a breakdown video by Zero, and he's like, Oh, she does like side B, jumps, side B, jumps, up B, side B's, jumps again. And I'm like, That is so dumb. It's still not as bad as Brawl Meta Knight gliding. No, like, no, it's, it's not bad. as bad. It's still bad. So, do, do, do they have like, are, is anyone going to be getting that game early at all? Are they going to give like a special key to like pros or something so i mean Does that normally I, happen for for this game i i highly doubt it like the pros the time the pros had to play it was they got to play it four hours before the tournament and that was the first time they ever got to see it or play it it was even so secret that they had uh when they first boot up the game and had all the characters except ridley on it because the direct didn't air yet so when the direct aired they saw Ridley, and they're like, what? And then they updated the game to put Ridley on the current build, which oh, is... Oh, that's pretty dope. That's yeah. so cool, actually. I like that. Yeah, they're like, oh, and uh, Ridley's playable now. And they're just like, what? Like, that, that, that I thought was really cool. But As far as preview copies go, I know that some... I don't know if they get, like, full copies, but I know, like, you know, for reviewers, um, like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, Game Explain or yeah. if, like, D1, who's a big Smash uh, commentator... I wouldn't be surprised if they get like maybe like two or three day early access copies, of course, with an NDA and everything where they really can't talk about anything. And probably Mewtwo King too, because he works for Nintendo now. He's a brand ambassador. No, I didn't know he got a job with them. Yeah, he like about a month ago. He got nice. hired by them. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would, that would be cool. I think it would. I, honestly, what I'd like to see is if they do actually want to embrace like kind of that competitive side, they, I think they should get pros involved. Because that's something I like that like CS did when they made CS go. They like they basically gave it to all of the top pros playing Source in 1.6, and were like, "Before it was hey, released, fi yeah, like fix this. Like, what do you actually want to see in this?" Yeah, I know other FPS like, have had issues with that before. Um, where like, yeah. and I mean, like, there's like, you're giving the pros like an extra week of getting good. But I mean, like at the same point, I can understand. Like, sure, they may get an extra week. But I don't really think a week, even a week, one week of labbing isn't going to change when patch patches will happen. Yeah. And like, honestly, if you're that high up the ladder anyway, is it really going to affect you that much? Yeah. 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 Like, but it's, it's, that's like really the only game I know that really did that mm -hmm. kind of beta. And I do, I want to see more esports do that kind of beta where they actually just hand it to pros and are like, 
yeah, no, spend four months of this while we're working in beta to just like kind of try to give us ideas mm. or at least some feedback or something. I guess because the only yeah, thing cool. with that would be being worried about like leaks and stuff. That'd probably be the only reason why they wouldn't do that. Uh, I'm going to say, I mean, like <laughs> the funniest thing is, um, <laughs> was it, it wasn't April, was, it might've been April 1st. Or I know there was one that was like on Game Facts, and it literally was spot on for everything, including Ridley, including all characters playable. And they said in that leak was like uh, <laughs> going to be a Konami rep being Simon Belmont. So I'm wondering, and there they have said what um, on the Smash Brothers website, it lists 65 out of 66. So there is at least one more character coming. While well, Luigi. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it's Simon Belmont if that was real. And I'd be cool with that because I really like Castlevania. Yeah. Did we got any questions? I see you have some questions for Nick. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, um, I mean, what was your favorite game that you played on the show floor? And what games did you play on the show floor besides Smash? So, I mean, that's one of the things, like, so far, everyone I talked to, like, I don't know if I can recommend, like, going to E3 just with the Gamer Pass really it's how yeah how we split up our day it was like all right the first day was all smashed and we were at the tournament all day the second day my friends got to go in like three hours four hours before me because they had the industry badge but you really only had maybe seven to eight hours a day like on the show floor and with those seven eight hours to play any i mean like every game was like a triple a title to play any game you were waiting two to three hours in line yeah. Yeah. do you probably play what two three games yeah, that's about it. You're not getting much. That's yeah, not even worth it. Well, because I know, yeah, this year they did that too. So half of the day was still press in the morning too. And it's mm -hmm. like any other convention. You're never going to see everything. Yeah. Even then, it's very, like, when you think about two to three games you get to play versus how many games they actually have available to play. Yeah, and I, really I can't does. imagine, like, if someone yeah. actually, like, flew out there, got a hotel, and they play, like, three, four games, <laughs> wait in line all I mean, day. I think it also depends on like what the game is too. I think that you actually get to play though, so that that does obviously weigh into it a lot. Where it's yeah, like, like being able to if do I could have done that, been cool. Played, yeah, like that, or it's like if I could have played Death Stranding, sure. But we all know there was no way in hell that ever happening. Yeah. So it's like being like, able to play sure, I consider that, that, but like I don't want to go play Skull and Bones, even yeah. though I want that game. I'm gonna buy that game the second it comes out. But no, I'm like it's not the same hype. Right. Kingdom Hearts three, I would, I would have, yeah. Loved. Like I, I, I wanted to try Kingdom Hearts three, but it was like, oh, two and a half hour wait. Let me, let me oh, just go yeah. jump back in line to play Smash again. Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Like I, th I think it's, I think it's definitely, it'd be more. It's definitely seems like it's more worth it if there is a game there that you know is probably gonna be there, that is in like a series that you cherish, mm -hmm. versus like Skull and Bones. Yeah, Which, that, that game looks sick. Now, did like, most games yeah. have like a long ass line? Yeah, it's just about every single game. Even like the smaller games. I mean, I guess the smaller games didn't have too much of a line. Like besides Smash, I played Soul Calibur, and that line was like 10, 15 minutes. Oh, um, I played Sonic Team Racing. That line by the last day didn't even have a line. Um, I'm trying to think what else. You, I played Ninjala, which was like some Splatoon. Um, I don't want to say rip off, but like inspired kind of game. Oh, where you play, talking about. Yeah, you play as these kids with the bubble gum. The line wasn't that long for that game, but everything else was like you're gonna be waiting about like half your day trying oh. to play. I would say how long was the line for? I don't know if you saw it for Resident Evil Two Remake because we were. Oh. I know me and Wayne were hyped on this game. I can only imagine that line being super long. Yeah, was, every time, every I time was, I saw it was just stupid long. Yeah, bad. So I was really hyped before it was a remake, but then once they actually showed it was two, I was like, okay, if you're going to remake any of them, I'm happy it's that, yeah, but I still sure. wanted a new one. <laughs> yeah, right. for that game, I, I couldn't honestly tell you how long it was because they had like, like it designed, like I want to say like a building. Um, there was like a car, a cop car outside. It, this was all inside, but like how they had up their booth set up. There was a cop car with zombies and then there was a line that like brought you into an actual building. So it was just completely dark in there, kind of just to immerse you into the game. Um, so yeah, I couldn't tell you how long that was, but if I were to guess a couple hours, because a lot of the lines actually had like people standing there with saying, oh, this line's closed till 4 p.m., 6 p.m., come back at this time, or this line you can't enter and like at all 
today. Man, the industry people, close. of course, and the insiders probably at those during those yeah. times. Like I know I just got done watching um like some some of the Maximilian uh, videos where he got to play Mega Man 11, Resident Evil 2, like a ton of games. But that's because he also has that follower count, that subscriber count mm-hmm. on, on YouTube. He's definitely an influencer. So he gets that access, but I can see where you're talking about industry pass. Yeah, I mean Cyberpunk, you couldn't even get in unless you were like specially invited. Yeah. To like go even see it. It's crazy. Don't care, I'm still hyped for it. I'm so hyped for yeah, it too. I, it's CD yeah. Project Red, dude. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I still I here's our here's our weekly doobie needs to play Witcher 3 rant. <laughs> I still haven't played it either. I'm gonna. Oh, uh, you to. both need to fucking go yeah. play right God. now. Alone. Port it, port it to Switch. I'll buy it. <laughs> no, dude. Serious. It probably would if they did. Like I know, I know you guys say that, but like, just trust me. If you have a gaming computer, just buy it on PC. Yeah. Like because all you all you need to do is um go look up. I'm sure someone's had to have made a video. Just watch it on console versus an actual gaming PC. It's probably they're, terrible. No, they're two different games. <laughs> they're like entirely two different games. I gotta, like, I gotta this 1080 like at some point. Yeah, yeah. like it, it is definitely one of those games where like they put a lot of work in how beautiful that world is. So like you do want to see that versus I mean the PS4 looks blocky. And it's like I think it was on sale on Steam, and I know Steam sales coming up, so it's definitely gonna be I on sale. Like, oh right now. Probably, probably like five bucks. to ten bucks. You can probably get bucks. for yeah, that's probably worth it. For sure. Yeah. For sure. I have spent more money on worse titles. Yeah, that's what I'm arms. saying. You gotta just get it and just play it, dude. I gotta throw shade at arms every chance I get. Yeah, <laughs> like, you could have oh played Witcher three fucking three times. I did not like that you game at all. Witcher three for all your arms consoles. So for the, for the price arms is the only arms. Switch game I have traded back to GameStop. <laughs> I was gonna trade it, and then I was like, oh, I only got twenty dollars for it. It came out like a week ago. I'm surprised <laughs> to give you twenty bucks for it. <laughs> that's insane. Oh, so sad. I give it away for two bucks. All right, um, so what, let's move to what we've been playing. Fortnite Switch. Have you guys played it at all? I haven't even downloaded I, it. I have finally played it. Are you a fan of the Battle Royale mode? It's... Uh, I don't hate it. Are you just bad at it? it no, is- I mean, I, I, I got to second place a couple times, and, and I mostly just play by, hey, I'm going to grab three weapons and just hide for the rest of the match until everyone else kills themselves. I am actually okay. Actually, I just thought of that. I'm really interested actually to see how building's gonna go on the Switch. Not how it works, but like how you get good at Fortnite is people just build like stupid fast. So yeah, honestly, yeah, I've on seen Switch. it. I don't, I, I've built maybe a few things, <laughs> mostly stairs. But I'm like, pretty good at building on the Switch, and I, and bad. I can, and I get. I'm pretty good on it just because I can build better than everyone else. You, know you what press I mean? the A button to switch into building mode. And then like, I guess it's just muscle memory to like start yeah. to really develop, but I'm just sitting there like looking at it. And by the time I realize I'm building something, I'm shot and dead. Yeah. 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 No, this the secret to that game is like the you, giant towers you can build when it's like the last circle and it's four players. Yeah. No, it's not even that. It's just ever all the time. If you ever get in a gunfight, you just start putting up like eight walls and then you'll win. Yeah, you have to. You have to get good at building if you expect to get good at. It's really the only way to get. Good. That's why I haven't played it in a long time. Like when it first came out and everyone sucked, I kept winning, and then I put it down for like two months and came back and was like, "Oh, I'm shit." Yeah. The only match, I, the only match I was like, I had more than one kill. I had two kills in one game where I took second, and it's because I found a freaking like a, a sniper rifle with a heat scope. Hmm. So even though you were building, I could still see you. Well, once you learn I mean, building, you're better than like 90% of the players. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So many players, like, I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's all battle arenas, but definitely that one. I feel like you drop, by the time you hit the ground, that 99 players is down to 50. Oh, yeah. Real quick. They're all like that. They're all like that. There's certain yeah, hot spots where everyone just goes to just, you just, you want to get your practice in. You just drop in those hot spots, get a couple kills, die, hit the lobby, and then do it over. And then after a few runs of that, then you like really play. That's how some people play. Well, no, yeah, it's it's that's what drew me to Fortnite in the first place was just also that it's like even then it's still like a fifteen minute game. Yeah. Like even if you win it, so it's like that's what that's what I liked about it. So you can just keep doing that, and it's fine because it's a small, it's a much smaller map than say PUBG. Yeah. Or uh, oh, yeah. 
what's that god mavericks mavericks proving ground did you guys talk about that i, last I week? heard about it. is that the thousand player one, one? Yeah. i have no i haven't played it but i heard about it no is it really a thousand why? players it's really a thousand players Supposedly. yeah why how shitty are those servers i don't know like, dude no like I, I ended up like having okay i this is this it might be because i'm a dev but I'm heavily judging them also that they're ever going to be able to have a thousand people on their servers when a- after they announced it at the PC convention, which or PC show, which is already the worst smallest show, their website was down for like four hours from traffic. Oh and it's God. like, if you can't even keep your website up, you're not giving me a lot of faith here. It has the lawbreakers concurrent player count where you, you don't, you only have one game going at a time. Well, it's also crazy. It's like how, how, can you keep that up just in terms of like filling those rooms all the time? You know what no, I mean? No, it's that. It's just like, okay, cool. So what, does it take like three and a half hours to win? Yeah, I bet. You know, PUBG already takes 45 minutes and it's only 100 people. So Dude, like, some... how, how many? <laughs> it, takes, imagine like, it takes three and a half hours to win, but it only takes like two minutes to die in that game because there's a thousand people around you. You're queuing up for another game. <laughs> a thousand players. Yeah. Like they, no. they uh they did have some cool looking systems in it, but at the same time, like I definitely have a lot of qualms about it because I, I it, it's more it. the concept is stupid to me. I'm gonna give you the, the, the term grounds. Yeah, Battle like, Royale with the grounds, you just you just come off as a ripoff. Well, it's also it's proving grounds, and it's you never name anything after Sailor Sarah Palin, basically. You just don't <laughs> do that. But um seriously like it i just can't get behind it conceptually but when i finally did get their website to load kind of sucks because like they have some they have some cool ideas the, i'm also worried though because they have so many cool ideas and the dude who was presenting it looked like he was 21 that i was like seeing happening it's like there's no way in hell this is ever going to actually happen development school yeah it's like it, that's awesome you got money and have a studio and like this if you could actually make this work it sounds really cool i don't see it happening because like they wanted to add systems where like okay if you get shot you leave a blood trail since there's so many people if you move through a forest it will break trees so you can be able to track people and stuff like that like they had a lot of kind of cool it seems so over ambitious exactly exactly like there were a lot of like things where it's like this like if you could pull this off this would be really cool but it's not it doesn't look like everything inside me is like you know what i'm saying okay there bud and it doesn't look like fortnite (laughs) like it the graphics are like far cry 5 level like they're it's a gorgeous looking game too so this is a really ambitious project did they have gameplay for it i don't see any i just see that their e3 trailer yeah, I imagine it's just re- pre-rendered. Stuff. No, but they, yeah. they think you, the reason why also the site was crashed is you can sign up for beta in a couple of months. Yeah, I think. Well, you you can sign up for it now. I think. Well, no, you can sign up for it now, but I mean, it'll, I think the beta is scheduled for like September, or October, or something like that. Yeah, I'm sure everyone's gonna try to get up on that. It looks pretty cool. Hopefully, it turns out. Like to it be- looks cool, but yeah, it, like it just I'm I'm worried. Cause just like a PUBG, why? that's a pretty ambitious fucking game with some some decent graphics, and they can't still can't get the fucking optimization right, and they have millions and millions of dollars behind them. We'll Five frames was what was it? Fifteen frames on, on Xbox? Uh, Xbox? Yeah, it was like one. It was like watching a picture book. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. That's terrible. Uh, on the Xbox One X, yeah, with thirteen teraflops or whatever. <laughs> you know, about. All right, so there was also Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. Yeah, yeah, I picked this up. Um, I actually, I wasn't originally going to pick it up, but um, my my buddy Mike, who uh, me and Nick both know, uh, he was like, yo, check out the demo. So I wound up getting the demo on the Switch, and then I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Then I wound up grabbing the demo on the PS4 so I could play with my fight stick. And um, yeah, that sold me on it, so I went and, I went and bought it. And... Um, it's pretty fun. I'm not going to take it seriously as I want to take, like, Dragon Ball. But um, uh, it's a 2v2 anime fighter with a bunch of different crossovers. Uh, and Persona. And I'm a huge Persona fan. so And I never got into Persona 4 Arena. So this is my first time actually playing with Persona characters in a fighting game. And they're some of my favorite. 
So, I mean, if you're, if you like just quick and the damage scaling is really high and the games are quick, which I really like. They're super fast. Dragon Ball can sometimes drag on a little yeah. bit too long, especially when you're playing high play, like high level gameplay, and you're just both blocking really well. Uh, Blaze Blue is a great, just quick pick them up play. It's a three, it's not even, it's three buttons. It's really a three button fighter, which is um, pretty simplistic. So it's easy access for new, new, like new players. Yeah. But it's got a really cool high ceiling for like competitive play. That looks pretty good. Watching the only thing I have now. a problem with it is the DLC. Just the way that they split up the DLC, where it's half of the characters are on, like you get like pretty much half of the roster, and the other half of the roster they're releasing over time. And it's a $50 title, so it's really a $70 title when you pay the $20 for all the DLC. Especially when you play the story mode, and those DLC characters are already in the story mode that you can fight against, but you can't play as them until they release them. Mm -hmm. Which screams on-disc DLC to me. That's the kind of the shadiest thing I've seen Arc Systems do in, in a long I'm time. I'm did it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm no. Nobody's happy with that situation, but they are offering the Ruby characters for free to everyone. So there are free characters coming at least. But um, I I really enjoy it, and um, I know me and Nick are probably gonna wind up playing it together. Yeah, I'm I'm so down to play. Already, I I gotta get it. I already put over five hours into the demo on Switch. It's like I keep playing the same characters and the same thing over and over again it's so addicting and it's just so simplistic but then like when you break it down there's like so many options to do what like every character has like a dp so they can get uh, anything with like a reversal then you have like your assist can come in three different ways you can tag in switch out like at any point you can tag your assist in during like when you're getting comboed um you can tag in your assists like when you're doing a super like they have so many options in that game which is so nice yeah i was just watching some gameplay where it was like they just kept bringing everyone in i yeah. think i think at evo you're gonna see i think a lot of people are questioning why have blaze blue it's not even out yet why did you announce it for evo when you could have announced well marvelous capcom died and that's kind of why they put blaze blue in is because they knew arc systems has a really loyal fan base and mbci is kind of a dead game um but I'm actually really excited to see the high level gameplay you're gonna get at um at Evo. I really think it's gonna be cool. Cool. Right on. And then also the Octopath Traveler demo. How's that? Didn't you play that already? I well this is a new demo. So at the Nintendo Direct they I thought announced, it was out. Uh it comes out on July thirteenth, so we're less than a month away. Um they said that it's about an eighty to one hundred hour title if you do all the side quests. Um in the first demo, you got to play as two characters, and you got to kind of explore their their first chapter. This demo is all eight characters, all of their chapter ones, but the caveat is you only have three hours. After you hit three hours, it forces you to save, and then you can transfer that data into the main game when it comes out. So you kind of get a head start. So I've been playing on different saves. I'm playing as each character is doing their chapter ones and checking each character out. And then I think what I'm going to do is before the game comes out, I'm going to straight up speed run as fast as I can, skipping all the cutscenes to get as many characters and get as far into the game as I can in three hours to save me some time. Because 80 to 100 hours, I already did that in Persona. It's so hard to really do that on multiple games in a year. Uh, yeah for sure but it's fun it is a lot of fun great i really like the combat system uh every character is really interesting they all have their own stories they all have their own motivations and the art style i really like there's a few things i hope they fix mostly with lighting there is some um, like specifically i recorded some footage um but it was in one character, like there's this weird way they do backgrounds where if you're in like a like a like a house, the background is still kind of visible. And there was one house you go into, and like there's a moon in the background, but if you sit in one specific way, it starts flickering like crazy. And it's just kind of buggy in some of the backgrounds, but the game itself 
in gameplay and stuff isn't buggy. It just looks really silly when you spam the dash button. Because this one is the first demo with all of the new quality of life changes they've made. So there's now cutscene skipping. There's now um, bigger text, which is one of my complaints was the text was too small. So they did up the text and it does look nice. Um, I haven't tried it on handheld to see if the text is good, but on like even just sitting at my computer when I was playing it the first demo, I was like all the way up like this, <laughs> trying to stare at the text. It was oh, bad. Fuck that. So they, they up the, the text um, font, which was nice. Um, you can dash. You couldn't dash in the first one. It was just one set walking speed. Now you can kind of dash, which is really nice. Um, and every character has their own like unique things they can do to interact with, with the townspeople. So like the thief can steal items. Um, the apothecary, he can learn information and get discounts on items or get discounts or find secret uh, like hidden items on the ground by talking to people. So there's really, and when you get all the characters, you can freely switch between them because from what I understand, it's built in a chapter system where you can do any chapter of any character if you have them by going to like the next story spot. But it doesn't, you're not limited by who else you have with you in terms of doing that. So it's all individual stories. And I'm hoping that it kind of culminates into like, once you're done their chapters into like a main final chapter with all the characters, because that's the one thing that feels kind of weird is there's no real interaction between the characters outside of like battles. And when you get them to join your party, like if you do a cutscene for like chapter one, even though you've already have two characters and you're doing another character's chapter one, those two characters really aren't there saying anything. It's really focused on that individual character which I like, but I want to see as the game develops and goes further in the story, more interactions between the characters. So I thought this was like a, just a regular kind of run-of-the-mill JRPG, but after watching it and hearing about it, it's like this fully-fledged, you know, R it's like a, it's a big title. And this I didn't realize that. Yeah, this, I didn't, I didn't realize that at first. This is the team behind Bravely Default, which a lot of people say is probably Square Enix's best titles for Nintendo who never who they had a great relationship Square and like Square at the time Square Soft and Nintendo before the PS1 like that era was amazing for RPGs the Super Nintendo is such a great Square machine when you talk about Chrono Trigger Final Fantasy 4 Final Fantasy 6 Final Fantasy 5 you know that never came to the US um and then the PS1 happened, of course. Square left Nintendo. They went, hey, you're doing the N64. We, don't, we want to do discs with, with Sony. Bam, Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9. And then after that, there wasn't really a great relationship between Nintendo and Square until more recently. And you can tell that when they put Cloud into Smash. Mm. That was a huge sign of Square and Nintendo coming really to an agreement with each other. And Square has even said they're making a, the studio like a separate part of Square to develop specifically Switch exclusives. And if this is the quality we're gonna get with Octopath, I'm excited to see what this company comes out with. Square, Square pissed me off with Final Fantasy 15, but Octopath is very redeeming. Yeah, I need another RPG, man. I've played the shit out of Zelda. I don't know, I think I'm done with it. I, I just shouldn't say that. I'm just saying, I love Xenoblade, it was really good. Should I try Cyberpunk. it? Sorry, just wait for Cyberpunk on the Switch. <laughs> more of an action rpg but it's uh if, if you like anime no i do i like i want i just want more rpgs man yeah xenoblade was a very good rpg i dropped i think 120 hours into that maybe i'll pick that one up i i took your recommendation for mario rabbids and i enjoyed it so i think i'll check out xenoblade then and the dlc for that comes out in september so yeah yeah play xcom too i hey that's <laughs> yeah. a free playstation game did you fucking play it I haven't got it. What I, are you I, doing, dude? I downloaded it. I have it. I have it forever. Play I can it. Play whatever I want. I'm gonna play it. It's awesome. Man. I think if um, you like Mario Rabbids, you'll love XCOM. There's yeah. No way you won't. <laughs> I got one last thing for what I will be playing. Um. So I've been over here freaking out a little bit because uh, apparently CS:GO just updated. A couple of hours ago to panorama ui 
which has been a meme for about two years of them saying it will come out. So apparently they uh, completely updated mean? their UI system. Like the uh, menu systems, basically. All of the menu systems are completely changed to actually look good in most cases are actually increasing FPS. So it looks better and apparently it runs better, but it also is showing like, it's showing more stats, like say on the board. It's just like a lot of little changes people have wanted for forever. So like uh, now you can hit a more stats button and see like headshot percentage, average damage per round, stuff like that. Like things that you'd normally use third party like face it, face it or ESEA for. Oh, okay. But also it just looks really good. It looks way better and increases performance. But like, I was also just completely shocked because seriously, this has just been the meme. Do they really need to increase the performance on Counter Strike? It's like the yes. greatest performing game ever. It's not, but it could. Well, it it's is. Not? It could I don't know, man. I don't know how, if anyone could beat Counter Strike in terms of optimization. Well, the last time I tried playing CS:GO, it told me that I was. Uh, I had the whole cheating thing. Got vac banned. Oh. I no, it was saying that it's, it's, it's an authentication error. Yeah, that's it's recognizing something as a problem. Yeah, it was. I've heard other people have a problem, and I just didn't feel like reinstalling it. Like uninstalling and reinstalling, which apparently fixes it. So I just gave up on playing. Counter Strike is the, no, the first game I install every time I I reboot a piece. Uh, download Counter. Well, it's not. It's yeah, it's that, but it's also because it's really small and it will run on anything. Yeah, but no, it was awesome. it, no. I, I'm more just shot because like no, seriously, like at least in the community there, like this has been the meme. This is like you know, it's it's because. CS in a lot of people's eyes is the uh, redheaded stepchild of Dota. So this is the Ridley of CS. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is this has been the like the every time every time for like two years. Whenever there's a CS:GO update, like the top post is like panorama. I like, got it. Just shit like that. Yeah. So right. yeah, if you play CS, go check it out. I guess because <laughs> apparently they finally did it, like yeah. three years late. <laughs> Um, all right, let's get into some news. World Health Organization classifies gaming disorder as a mental health condition. Watching as a video game ensnares their children, uh, many a parent has grumbled about digital heroin likening the flashes of images to one of the world's most addictive substances. Now they may have backup. The World Health Organization announced gaming disorder as a new mental health condition included in the 11th edition of its International Classification of Diseases released Monday. I'm not creating a precedent, said Dr. Vladimir Pozniak, a member of WHO's Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse, which proposed a new diagnosis to WHO's decision-making body, the World Health Assembly. Instead, he said WHO has followed the trends, the developments which have taken place in populations and in the professional field. However, not all uh, psychologists agree that, that gaming disorder is worthy of inclusion in the international classification of diseases known as the ICD. So... I didn't read this uh, this article yet. Do you guys know like what exactly is the issue that 20, they're trying to touch on? They say that uh, playing 20 hours or more of uh, games a week classifies uh, you in the gaming disorder category, which I find not only ridiculous, but can I just sit here and laugh about digital heroin real quick? <laughs> I mean, it's a friggin' that is. That yeah. is I'll play, devil, I'll play devil's ad. I would absolutely call PUBG. I would absolutely no. call PUBG some digital hero. I hate I it. S- it ruined my life, but I still play it. I was going to say, I almost dropped out of high school because World of Warcraft released. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not a point. Saying, I'm not saying that gaming addiction or gaming disorder, like, I'm not saying they don't exist. Yeah, no, but it is. I don't it, feel like these are the, the hyperbole is, yeah. The hyperbole around it's kind of funny. Yeah, and the 20 plus sure. hours, that's if we break it in, that's Monday through Sunday, that's seven days a week, that's a little less than three hours a day. I guarantee you people do, like if I read for three hours a day or I watch TV for three hours a day, Monday through Sunday, week long. Which most people do. Is that an addiction? Am I a reading addict? Do I have a reading disorder? <laughs> Is there a, <laughs> that's a good point. There are people, we call them bookworms. 
who read way too much. <laughs> no, maybe, no, maybe maybe playing forty plus hours of games a week. I could see where that starts to really delve into. Okay, maybe there might be a problem. Well, here it says he said there are three major diagnostic features or characteristics of gaming disorder. One is that the gaming uh, behavior takes precedence over other activities to extent to the extent that other activities are taken to the uh, periphery. Second feature is impaired control of these behaviors. Even when the negative consequences occur, this behavior continues or escalates. A diagnosis of gaming disorder then means that persistent or recurrent behavior pattern of sufficient severity has emerged according to the ICD. A third feature is that the condition leads to significant distress and impairment in personal family, social, educational, or occupational functioning, uh, Posniak said. Now, I don't know if you've all seen the video of the Twitch dude. With the fucking That's, PC gaming yeah. thing on his face, and he's in a room. He's to, his room is a fucking disaster, and he's crying about how he's destroyed his life because of gaming. Is that the dude who tattooed his Twitch link on his eye? Uh-huh. No, it's a different dude. Okay, like, I saw yeah. that one. That was uh, man. Wait, that's that's real. Yeah. Man, somebody actually like their Twitch.tv slash. Wait, user. did it, but was it? Is it actually real? I don't know if it's real. Uh, it looks like a real tab, that. dude. It, I don't know. I mean, it I was fresh. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I'll believe it if I if see it. If it's a Photoshop, it's a pretty good Photoshop. Yeah. But yet, I mean, okay, I've, okay. Once you said that outline, yeah, I've read, I read this dude's work before, because I definitely used that in a research paper once. I'm saying when you when you like look at that, that screams any addiction to me. Well, yeah. When your well, personal it is. matters it is. start to be a problem. But that, but but I that's think... that's kind of the point. Is I think right. what they're that's what they're the trying point. to say with that is having it acknowledged that that can be a problem yeah exactly. and i think that is important because you're right that is the outline of any addiction but it's yeah. it, there is a point where you should now it's in a now it's in the icd it's like right there's there, I, I agree with you also i disagree that it's 20 hours but i i do understand that it's it would be it's okay to have that classified because i mean crap even when i was growing up you know people would just laugh and say depression it's not real you know what i mean and just like stuff like that so like and it is it is one of those things where like if that is a potential to be a problem it should at least be able to be recognized well just think about like yeah. how gaming has evolved into the loot box situation where they're they yeah. they make them so much more addicting that way and they do well, it's it on that purpose too, but it's also like how mu- we we play a lot of video games now yeah that's i true. mean like, mobile, mobile gaming is yeah definitely picking up so well, it's, it's gaming, casual yeah. people who didn't play traditional video games are spending three hours playing Candy Crush a day. The average teenager, by the time they are 20, are going to play 10,000 hours of video games. I believe it. Yeah, it's that's like, surprising. No, I know. That's that's the actual statistic. I think <clears throat> I'm the same guy this dude originally published his work in or a very similar one. But it's like, I, I can see it, but also, yeah, I disagree with his 20 hours. Where I think the 20 hours comes in is because there is this idea where there is a bell curve because in it that's right around three hour that three hour a day mark because up to that point there's also a lot of research that's been done that especially amongst children um playing video games is actually quite beneficial yeah. it's it's allowing that little bit of a disconnect is actually very good it's the same thing like being a having a creative outlet or you know like reading a book i guess would be different but it's something that gets your imagination for it's something that lets you disconnect a little bit enough where you can like get into that space of being able to think better but after that is where that bell curve starts going down where they start noticing people have more issues towards like what they were saying where they're like me and it's like cool i'm gonna go to work for nine hours and then i'm gonna come play wow for nine hours yeah, and then it fucks I mean, your sleep up, it fucks your diet up, it fucks your. I don't need more up. than six hours of sleep. <laughs> I mean, I have spent many of a night. I mean, I've done it with Splatoon playing till six in the morning. And me too, man. On the weekends, okay. not on the week, not on the you know, not on the weekdays. Dude, that's the problem with my Switch. It's so easy to lay in bed and play it, and just I just fucking <laughs> it's either Splatoon or fucking Zelda, dude. I just can't stop. That's one of the best things about the poor battery life on it. It's like, yeah, true. Right, I'll, play, I'll play for a couple hours and it's like, oh, it's about to die. Yeah, time for squeeze bed. Squeeze those few minutes in. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right, everyone's mad at PS4 crossplay restrictions. Um, so what happened was uh, uh, Fortnite got released on Switch. Everyone was like, "All right, let's go." I downloaded it right when it was announced. Actually, I downloaded it the day after. 
installed it. I went to go put my Fortnite name in, which is connected to the PlayStation. You get hit with an error message that basically says, hey, uh, this is not our problem. <laughs> this is a Sony problem. You're pretty much fucked. You're going to have to make a new account. And I didn't realize it at first. Like, I didn't just, I didn't read it. No, I don't really read those things. But then after I read it, I was like, holy shit, I can't use my Sony account. And then I just made a new account for the Switch. So now I have three fucking Fortnite accounts. It's the, and the funny thing is, like, with the crossplay between Nintendo, PC, and Microsoft, if you want to play, like, Minecraft, and you have a Minecraft account already from Microsoft, you literally sign into your Switch with your Xbox Live account. Yeah. That's so cool. It's yeah. Nintendo and Microsoft together. Like I really like I've, we were saying last show, I really love their prosumer concept when it comes to cross play and PS4. And this is well, not they, they have new. to now. Yeah, they have it's to now. Like this Sony's got all the market share. So they can be the Apple and just be like, nope. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, is I mean, true. this has been a thing since like Rocket. Even like, no, this, that's Rocket exactly League. what I was thinking the entire time is like. Yeah, this has been a known problem for like four years. Like I, I yeah, don't yeah. get why this is news or shocking. I guess, but all right. Is well, Rocket League? I think, I think it, the reason why it became big news like is one because Fortnite, and two, I think the Epic's response to it is kind of what made yeah. it news. They were just like, dude, this. If you want, they said in the in the disclaimer, it says if you want this change, you have to contact these people. This is not our issue, which I thought was interesting. Um. But Sony, they're not gonna, they're not gonna do crossplay, dude. They're yeah. never gonna do it. They don't have to. They don't care to. And uh, that's just the My way. Dude, it's their be. answer was the most bullshit answer. Where it's like, well, we have 80 million install base, so obviously we're doing something right. I mean, you, it was just a giant. It was are just they there. wrong? Are they wrong though? Do you guys know they're wrong? Wait, bro. do you guys know the reason behind why they allow like crossplay with PC, like such as? street fighter oh it's not a direct competitor okay that makes sense like that that's my that would be my yeah. guess because yeah they do so they do allow sense. i mean even with fortnite they actually allow it with pc but yeah. they only allow it with pc and i'm assu- i'm pretty sure it's just because it's not direct competitor yeah i guess that's that would that would be the only thing because they like the only things they actively block it from is xbox and switch yeah <laughs> but yep. they don't they don't assume that like if someone owns a pc they probably own like a switch or like an xbox or even a ps4 i think they no, assume they it PS4. i think they yeah. assume it they just don't care yeah know? they just yeah. don't care yeah. well it's i mean like... it's also like again it's they don't have to because like again you i mean honestly just just watch the last couple of years of xbox versus sony's e3s and like really genuinely ask that question of like why would i buy a place or like why wouldn't i buy a playstation why is like Wayne yeah. the only person who bought an Xbox? <laughs> yeah, I really, I, I was saying this last show too. I really yeah, last like this reminds me so much of the PlayStation Two, where oh, we sold like a hundred million. Yeah, and and we just we're, we're Sony, come at us. Yeah, and then PS3 came out, and that was just it was kind of a flop. Everyone had a 360. So I mean, yeah. I, if Xbox can come with the, the first party titles, like I want them to. Yeah. That's and all I mean, they need. Meant to buy Xbox. And why did everyone buy an Xbox? Because of Halo. And Crackdown. Yep. Wait, when, when's that coming out? <laughs> 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 but like, and, but now it's like, oh. Xbox, I mean, when it, and the 360 dropped, it had that, it was just, a, it was like that high def Gears, online yeah. machine. Gears yeah. of War 1 also was a great game. Yeah. I enjoyed it. had a lot of good titles. Fusion Frenzy, dude. Fable series. Oh, is that the first Xbox? The Fables, yeah. Dude, Fable 2, I played so much Fable 2 on my 360. But yeah. now it's like, oh, I want I want to play that samurai bullshit game. I want to play Death Stranding. I want to play, and it's like, well, shit. They, I really have a choice. Saying, it's a good thing they're on the PS4. I'm just saying when we get to the next level of consoles and it's a refresh. It's not going to be that big of a refresh, I don't think, though. Well, I mean... Xbox has already came out, come out saying during E3 that we're working on the next consoles. Right, they all are. It's yeah. it's not going to be well. Both both I'm of them are, in terms of branding. Okay, I guess, but like it, it's I don't still don't think it's going to be that big until they fix software because both of them are trying to do that like constant forever upgrade cycle. 
So every every console now is supposed to be able to support PS4. So I mean, I don't think if PS4 they're backwards compatible, then yeah. If the, if the PS5 yeah. or whatever they do branded, I'm pretty, at, yeah, I'm pretty sure the goal is PS4 games. That's huge. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the goal is right now. It's all gonna be no. It's all it's all gonna be the, the idea is it's all the same system now. It's okay, just I hope it's so. just hardware upgrades. I hope so because play, like when it comes to backwards compatibility right now, you got to give that fight to Xbox. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sony. That yeah. was Sony would be the worst one to do that with the yeah. backwards compatibility. PS3 couldn't play PS2, you. but it could play PS1. PS4 can't really play anything. Nah, my PS3 can't play PS2. Is no, about the first only, one? They can only play PlayStation One discs. Yep. I don't. Know, I don't really. Well, now play... I can't even play PlayStation Three discs, but because it was also a first gen PS3. But. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I was, that's one of the, one of the big reasons I was always such a fan of Nintendo. Even when the Wii came out, the Wii supported GameCube. Like yeah. you could play GameCube games on your Wii. I always thought that was cool, but I just never played those older games. Yeah, it's it depends on what the game is and if you're into those games, basically. I would only play there, Witcher there's Three. Somewhere, yeah, just, well, there's, there's also somewhere out. like I'll go back and play, and then there's definitely other games that I like. I feel like playing this. This sucks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, when it comes to like in like the PS Now, I hate PS Now. I think I don't think it's worth the money at all. I haven't even tried. It's, it's, it's really the only way it. to play PS2 games on there. Yeah, that's not worth it. Okay. Just I'll keep tell you PS2, what, because your PS2 is better build quality than the PS3. I'll tell you what, dude. Next gen console comes out, Doobie's gonna get it. And he's still not gonna be able to play with fucking Witcher Three on it. So we're gonna be waiting for him to buy it on we're, Steam. Well, gonna game He's gonna, we're gonna wait for him to buy it on Steam sale for twenty five cents. Pretty we're gonna much. buy all the games for him, and he's we're gonna come back every week. Have you played it? <laughs> yeah. um, I gotta get. I gotta use this ten eighty at some point. I bought it. All right. GameStop and talks with buyout firms and drawing interest sources. Uh, video game electronics. Uh, GameStop Corp is holding talks with private equity firms. Potential transaction after receiving buyout interest. I don't know who the fuck wants to buy GameSpot or Games GameStop. Blockbuster. <laughs> the lone the lone blockbuster in, in Anchorage, Alaska. Or yeah. Toys R Us. <laughs> or yeah. this, uh, Dude, they should, should do a super tips. they should do a super buy buy everyone out. <laughs> and then say, have a fucking GameStop, exist. Toys R Us, fucking EB Blockbuster. Games. Goodbye, Funko Land. Get yeah. them all in there. <laughs> Like, legitimate question, does Gamefly still exist? Is that still a company? I see commercials for it. Because I think yeah, I see works. commercials, but I don't I don't know anyone who uses Gamefly. Me Maybe either. they, they can buy them out. You just get Redbox. Yeah, I've Do never... you guys actually use Gamefly? Or no. Redbox? My parents use Redbox for movies. Yeah, yeah that's same. About I'm, I'm saying for games. It's only like no. a dollar. No, I've yeah. never used I've never fucking used it. It seems There's, like, I mean, for well, us, I mean, like, we seem like we're more into, like, the gaming world, but it just seems like some, like, I guess, guy that just has no idea and wants to pick up, like, the new God of War or something goes over, like, rents it for a dollar and then just drops it all. <laughs> the yeah, new yeah. Like, like, I think, yeah. I think that would be, I think for games, it would be more useful if you could be like, okay, I'm going to rent it for $5 for a week. So I think part of that, too, is, like, it's it's a lot easier for a two-hour movie, but, like, for... I will yeah, say, you're not check, play God of War in a day. <laughs> I don't know if you're where maybe because where I live is is nice. I don't know. Check your local library. A lot of libraries these days not only carry games, they carry new games. Like my library has an entire thing that has like I think maybe fifteen or sixteen Switch games, like individual Switch games. You can just rent out for a week. Dude, I used to always go to the library with my uncle and we get new movies. That's what yeah. We just yeah, have a library. I go to the library for everything until I'm uh, banned from the local library around here. What? You got banned from your library? What no, did you I just do? I just still have probably like thirty books. <laughs> oh, true, true, true. See, I, I. I <laughs> I finally got caught. I technically moved to a different town, and uh, even though I work in the same in the same like town that my old library is in, I tried renting something, and they were finally like they finally caught up with it, and they were like, "Can we see your license?" I was like, yeah. "You just run license? out the door." <laughs> it's like I think you owe us like three hundred dollars. Yeah. Same library I rented like fifty CDs from. It was a dollar a day overcharge, and I never returned them. Dude, I haven't been to this Philadelphia library yet. I should probably go soon. I haven't seen a library. I haven't man. seen a library in years, dude. They do. They have video games. I haven't like, been in a library since I was like 
18 years old. Why, why spend seven dollars to rent a game for a week from Redbox when you can rent it for a week from a library? Yeah, I would have, dude. I would have told you to go to the library. I still go to the library like half. Well, not all the time, but depending on which one it is, I'll still go decently because they have like decent Wi-Fi. So it's like cool if I don't feel like working at the office or from home, I'll just go or don't want to go to the I'm, coffee dude, shop. It's like I'm going go to, to the library. Go to the library. Yeah, I'm going to the library tomorrow. It's a fucking plan. Yeah, it's just like cool. I'm gonna work for three hours from the library for a change of scenery, basically. Yeah, they have a whole manga section. You can go get manga and read anime. Yeah. All right. Last story. Mm-hmm. PUBG creators fight back against asset flipping controversy. I'm interested in knowing what Jerry's opinion is. So uh, there was a few threads on Reddit, uh, PUBG Reddit, saying Blue Hole buys insane. assets for PUBG, and uh, they show like that they're using assets from the Steam store. And, uh, oh no! When they when the first game first came out, it wasn't the Steam store; it's the Epic store. They bought a shit ton when it first came out. Yeah. Now they responded That's by was... saying, uh, "The first thing to understand is that if you're just starting up a team, you've got to lean on an asset store asset store work because that's the only way you can spin up a game fast and for a reasonable price to quickly find the fun. Hiring an art team of 40 people to try a game and see if it's fun is simply not a smart way to work." This is what the asset store is for. It's a great research for a uh, resource for teams that want to work smart. Do you agree with them? Um, yeah, if you're trying to make a early access game. Yeah, like if you're if you're making a new studio, sure, I can, I can see that. Oh, you, but also part of that is you got to actually replace those assets after a while and then not bitch when you're have competition against you because uh, no, I agree, I agree with that statement a lot, actually. If you're like, if you're making a new thing, sure, and you're trying to make a proof of concept, that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? The only problem I give them a lot of crap for is all of the stuff that they just give Epic a lot of shit where it's like, well, yeah, you bought, you, I mean, you just you just bought all of Epic's property and now you're, you're bitching that they're also making a game. Mm-hmm. Like, make your own then. <laughs> So I mean, is, that, whole... is that what happened? They bought assets from Epic. Ep- yeah. Ep- Epic makes Fortnite, right? Yeah, and... Epic makes Fortnite. No, uh, the entire engine is Unreal Engine. They just bought it from Epic. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah and then they started getting really pissed that Fortnite was coming out, and they were just <laughs> like made a huge shit st- show out of it. And you're just like, I mean, that's one of the reasons Fortnite runs so much better is it's made by the actual makers <laughs> of Unreal Engine. Yeah. PUBG like, can't get, they can't optimize Unreal for shit. <laughs> it's not their engine, and then it's not their assets either. They're using fucking bought, bought assets. I now, just find assets. So like, it, 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 I, I, like I said, I do agree with that if you're, if you're trying to make something really quick, like he's right. describing. The other part of that, though, is like you would eventually try to either make another game based off of the earnings you made or fix your shit. So if say I'm making a game and I use some assets, like I, I'm using like a grass asset in my game, and then I the game is it's an early access. I'm like this this is working great. Then I release the game, but I still use those assets. Is that is that an issue for something like grass and just like weird props? Like it's not like an actual I mean, prop of the game, but they're just like setting pieces. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't like when if it's an early access game or you're an early access, sure, dude. Like I, I don't see any problem with that. But what if I release it with those assets? I mean, like if it's just grass and stuff, yeah. So what? Even if it's like, even if it's just normal assets, like go ahead. That that's literally what they're there for. Yeah. But it's like stock photos. Don't, exactly. Like you can you can release a product like that. I don't have to call it a good product, but you're you're totally entitled to release a product like that. Just don't afterwards bitch like you just found Jesus because you're using stock assets. Yeah. I just think of um, I just think of that, do you remember that old uh, parody bit? It's like um, all about B-roll. No. Where it's like guy getting married. We got that B-roll. Yeah, Tim and Eric. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 1978 World Series win by the Yankees. No, too specific. That's not B-roll. <laughs> I just think of I just think of like B-roll, like when you're working in any kind of advertisement or anything like that. Yeah, you're purchasing that. It's you're not always filming your own B-roll. B-roll is a thing you can buy. 
Like, I don't know. To, to me, it's it's not. It's like gaming B roll. It's like it's yeah. like, it's it's like buying samples. It's like buying music samples, making a song out of that. You know, using those samples. But I, it's just the whole idea of buying someone else. They sold. I don't. Know, Epic sold it. They you know, PUBG whoever this I can't remember the studio's name. They bought it. Blue Hole, whatever it is now. I mean, there's you obviously PUBG know what you're getting into when you're selling and buying assets. Yeah, well, like it's, it's it's I don't have a problem with it at all. No, I don't either. But it's just it, it it the things I have more of a like problem with is like how sometimes some of their people get very animated about it, like someone pointing out that they did that and the guy's response is, "I see these comments and I'm like, I want to kill you." Hmm. That's 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 the creator of the game, and you're like, hmm. Where do they where do they put their money? Don't they have a shit ton? That's a good question. No one <laughs> yeah, knows. No one knows. <laughs> that's a very good question. You would think they would put it all into optimizing a console version of the game so it can get yeah. released and more people buy and they can get more money, but it doesn't seem to be the answer. Dude, honestly, it, at this point, I think they should just put it into making a new second game. I, I they have to be doing that. I can't imagine that. I mean, they're releasing a new the Sandhawk Mac map in a couple days, which is going to be pretty big because it's a smaller map. It's a jungle map. And then I know they're releasing a snow map. So that's pretty cool. I mean, four, four very different maps for this game. And I have to imagine they're not going to do any optimization anymore. They're not going to upgrade it after that. And then they're just going to make a new, a new title. It's probably going to be a mobile Royale game. <laughs> I mean, you really on my idea of asset flipping, which when I first read this, I thought of something completely different, was uh, one last bit on Smash Brothers is when Smash Ultimate, the new Smash game, got announced and people were like, oh, it's a port, it's a port, it's a port. They're using the assets, it's a port. Just because you use assets doesn't make it a port. Right. Yeah, no, that's Especially also... in your own game. You know? well, no, it's, dude, that, that, like, that's why I don't have a problem with it. I mean, like... I'd be lying if I didn't admit that a lot of my money and income from being a freelancer is like just making people little snippets that they're too lazy to do based off of basically the same API and half of it. I mean, that's, that's a lot of ideas in objective based programming is you, you make it to re as reusable as possible. Yeah. And so a lot of my money comes from what people are too lazy to do. And I just have a library that takes me like 10 minutes to change it towards what they're trying to do. Yeah, I, th I just thought it was interesting that people were, were calling them out for, because the asset that they show is like this jungle gym thing, like this prop jungle gym, and it's in the map somewhere. And they're like, look, they're using, the, they're using assets. I was just like, yeah. it's like, it's not like they're character assets, you know, or it's like a weapon asset. It's literally just like a setting piece. It's map, yeah, it's map assets. Well, that's also though, like that's also a, it is interesting though, because like again, I think it, for that that should just be used as art assets. Because I still also remember <clears throat> how many videos there are that are like, oh, the game's out, and the first video is, you know, it wasn't Donkey, but it would basically be someone like Donkey just like jumping on the jungle, like the jungle gym. Like I can't go through this, mm. you know, and making fun of it like for stuff like that. So it's like if you're gonna release a final game, release something you're gonna be proud of. Yeah, that's true. Like, like you have an art team by that time i would hope have them make you a little jungle gym and actually make your own box for it that you can go through yeah. or like it's the little things like that where i think they could start working towards that instead of that's where they assets got, they got all the money like, in the world man. they could have like two guys doing that too like oh here's a jungle gym asset we use let's just replace that real quick okay here's this asset let's replace this real quick that way we it can take, make it, it more more than that but yeah yeah, just make it more optimized. That, that would optimize the game. <laughs> That's what we need. That's what they need. Fucking fuck. All right. Yeah, like, because this original post is from 10 months ago. Like, yeah. when the game first came out. Like, that point, dude, who fucking cares? Yeah. All right. That's it for the gaming portion of the show. Let's thank our guest, Nick Stefanacci, for coming on. Thanks, dude. It was nice thank having you. your, your you three insight. Taking one for the team. Are you going to go next year? I don't know, honestly. I mean, Smash is probably my favorite game of all time. So, I mean, like you guys said, yeah. like if there's one game there that you go for and just focus on, I mean, that's what I did. I ended up playing Smash probably like 20 times. So I played it probably like several hours. Yeah. 
So I think it was worth it for that. And my cousin went last year and he was like, yeah, I don't know if I would go again if Smash wasn't there. Yeah, I, 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 I don't. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I think if we did, if we decided to go, we would try to get that industry pass. Yeah, you guys would need to. Yeah, or we get a fucking media pass, dude, and yeah. we'd be behind the scenes watching Cyberpunk, dude. <laughs> that's the goal. That that's what you need. Yeah, that media pass. All right, we're gonna catch you guys next week. Don't forget to hit the show tomorrow for the tech portion. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye. <laughs>